Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Rent Prep for Landlords. This is episode number 245. I'm your host, Eric Worrell, and I'm really excited. Uh, we have a special guest on the podcast today. You guys might be familiar with him if you caught him on episode 220. Uh, that, that was titled Motivation Mike. I'm here with uh, Michael Sims. How you doing, Mike? Good morning, young man. How are you? I am excellent. You know what, though? I am looking out the window, and right now we've got a crazy storm about to hit in Buffalo. <laughs> so my wife just texted Uh-oh. me that the schools are already closed for tomorrow oh. and the next day, which very rarely happens. So uh, wow. I, think we're, I think we're in for it. We're in for a treat. <laughs> well, it's one way of looking at it. I like your positive mental attitude anyway. Yeah, well, that's a good segue because that's what we're going to be talking about on the podcast today. Uh, if you guys haven't had the chance to check out episode 220 with Mike, uh, there's a little bit of backstory in there. We won't go into it quite as much, but uh, Mike and I met on a bike ride called the Empire State Ride. Uh, seven days, 540 plus miles. It goes from New York City, to Niagara Falls. Awesome, awesome event. Uh, proceeds go towards cancer research at Roswell Park Cancer Institute. And I met Mike on the first day, and I think it was more so from a distance. And I was like, this guy's kind of nuts. And by day seven, I was like, this guy's awesome. I love, <laughs> I love that introduction. That is very, very funny. Oh, <laughs> well, man. How about right after this intro, we get to uh, talking about motivation and uh, sure. You know I'm going to be using you, Mike. I'm, I'm going to be using you to fire me up. So that's what Good. we're talking about today. That's what I'm here for, man. That is what, that's my, my life's goal. That's what I'm here for. Welcome to the Rent Prep for Landlords podcast. And now your hosts, Stephen White and Eric Worrell. You guys got Eric Worrell and Mike Sims this week. I know you go by Mike or Michael. Which one do you prefer? Either, either one is fine. Either one is fine. You know I've been what? called worse, I assure you. My problem is I'm kind of lazy and I'm going to go with Mike, but you know, that's what we're going to be talking today about. Uh, sometimes you feel kind of lazy and you're looking for motivation. And Mike, you and I were talking, was it yesterday, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We were talking yesterday and we're, we're trying to figure out uh, what we want to do because for you guys listening, Mike is awesome. He has this gift for tapping into people and making them like just feel lit up and like you want to run through a wall after talking to Mike and he has this natural gift that you have for just being able to figure out what makes people tick and really be able to dial them in. Uh, and thank you. That's very nice. Yeah. And I I mean, 100%, I I got the, uh, it was a privilege to listen to you speak in the evening. The one night they asked if anybody wanted to stand up at this uh, bike event that we went to and you stood up and you just like gave this speech about kicking cancer's ass and we're going to, kill those hills tomorrow and all this stuff. And by the end of it, I was like, holy crap. Like, I, I want to get back on my bike today and start riding. You know, it was just... It was awesome. <laughs> and we did. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was a long week, but it was, it was an awesome, awesome ride. And what I'm interested in is we've got this audience here at Rem Prep, and we're in a few different places, right? We've got the people who listen to the podcast here. We've got a really active Facebook group called Rem Prep for Landlords. Uh, we've got our email newsletter, and then we have the people that use our service or background checks. Uh, what I want to do is be able to kind of pull you into the fold and have you kind of be a voice within the group, especially, but also on the podcast and making appearances there and really filling a <clears throat> void that people have. And I think we kind of started to touch on this yesterday, a void that people have where they just kind of feel like, I think you said it feels like you're in neutral. Sometimes you're driving around in neutral, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I well, let, let's look at it this way. If, if anybody is feeling the way you just described as far, as far as feeling in neutral, take, take this to, to heart. Congratulations. You're normal. That is, that is a big part of a progress. There are times when you're going to be like, you know, dropping the shoulder through the wall. And there are times where you feel like you're a little overwhelmed. Congratulations, you're normal. The other thing I think everybody should take from this is that's a natural progression for anybody that is really creating something great in their life. There's going to be ebbs and, and flows. And that's all there is to it. When you're cranking, enjoy it. When you're not, come back to this and we'll find a way to get that gas back in the tank. But don't sit back, any of them, uh, anybody listening, don't sit back and say, oh, I'm having a bad day. Okay, congratulations, you're normal. Don't worry about it. We're going to get you back into the position mentally where you're ready to just take on life and, and beat it and win. And it can happen, and it's going to happen by doing this. So Mike, just you know, take, take into account, you know, it, it's, it's, it's part of the natural progression toward your goals. 
So for you, I know that you kind of just have a natural energy about you. Uh, it's clearly helped you as far as like the fact that you rid- rode across New York State twice so far. I mean, most yeah. people aren't doing that uh, alone. or no, Most people aren't doing that at my age and you're what, in your 50s? I am uh, 56. And you put what, like five, 6,000 miles on your bike a year? Uh, last year, I put just over 9,000. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I never claimed, I never claimed to be normal. <laughs> yeah. And like, I'm friends with Mike on Facebook and there'll be photos where it's just like, it's like 10 degrees out in New York city, long Island area. And Mike's out riding his bike. And I'm like, he's out of his mind. I'm like, I, I love it though. On my bike outside. I'm uh, you know, in the uh, garage or something, but you, okay. have, you have this natural intensity about you and this natural energy that a lot of people don't have. Um, what about people who say they're just like, you know, I'm just low energy or I'm in a funk right now. I mean, how do you, like, is there something that you see in people? Cause I feel like you have a very innate ability to, um, you're a good perceiver. Like you're able to perceive what somebody might be doing or where they're at, uh, right now in life. Um, what do you do with somebody like that? If they're just, uh, they're saying I'm in a funk right now, like what would you tell them? Okay. Listen to what you just said. You said, I'm in, if, if somebody would come to me and say, Michael, I'm in a funk right now. Okay. I'd take them and say, okay, just repeat what you just said to me. I'm in a funk right now. Right now means this is not permanent. This is temporary. Mm-hmm. And I would go back and say, okay, congratulations. You're normal. <laughs> this is going to happen. The way to get out of it is to, is to, what I would do is just ask them a lot of questions and I need to find out when I talk to them, what's their motivation? Why are they in that position they're in? And it's, it's kind of hard to do it without really without you and I um, addressing what's bothering you at the moment. Mm. Take them aside and ask them a lot of questions. I need to find out. I need for them to tell me where they are so I know how to get them out of where they are, where they are and where they need to be. It, it, it sounds a little vague, but um, like if they're in a funk right now, okay, let's, let's sit down and discuss. Let's go back through your motivation. Let's go back through your goals. Let's readdress. Let's realign your mind with what it is you want out of life. I'll get them to go there, but I need to talk to them. And one of the things that I'm hoping – that we do through this podcast is if people are listening to it or watching it um, and they start to comment, I want to, I want to read their comments. I want to address them after the fact or during the podcast itself. I need to find out what, what I need to do for them. And a lot of times it's just in conversation. We had touched on empire state ride and I had talked to, um, I won't mention her names just cause I don't know if there's a legality issue here, but I had talked to her young lady probably about a year older than my, uh, my oldest son. And we were talking and she had told me what her motivation was for doing the empire state ride. And one particular day, I mean, you and I had touched on this actually in the, uh, the first podcast. Mm-hmm. And, um, I saw her coming up what was a brutal hill and it was at the end of 91 miles. And we were riding in, um, 95 to 97 degree weather in humidity in New York. And I could see the look on her face and I tapped into what she told me, what was in her heart. And I had said something to her and she got out of the saddle and literally accelerated up the hill. So I need to find out where that person is, what those trigger points are. And, and after talking to them for a little while, I, I know what they are and I know how to get it out of them. Mm-hmm. I don't well, know if that's a vague answer or. or well, I think the, the tough thing sometimes is knowing, you know, there, there's people that are goal oriented where they write it down and they know, you know, here's my one month plan, six month, one year, five year, 20 year, you know, um, mm-hmm. One of the things that we were talking about recently is having like a, a bigger goal that's just outside of money. Uh, I think that's kind of the default goal that a lot of people uh, land on, and especially listeners of this podcast, because people who are landlords, right? You're doing something because you're investing in your future, right? Most yes. people aren't doing it just because they want to be a landlord. It's the money component of it. So there's probably goals that are associated with money. And um, what are your thoughts on that as far as like when somebody's kind of chasing a dollar or chasing a buck uh, and that's what they're using for their motivation? That uh, it concerns me a little bit. Because I don't think that's a, a strong enough motivator to keep you locked and loaded in the game for an extended period of time. It should be a lot deeper than that. We have touched on it when you and Steve and I were talking yesterday about the altruistic goals, about the real, um, the real heartfelt, not the wallet felt motivation for doing what you're doing. Let's, let me take it a step back and, and look at it this way. And this is what I want to say to your clientele. You look at what you're doing as far as being a landlord. First of all, I applaud you. Um, for a myriad of reasons, and I'll share a couple of them with you. Real estate accounts for, I think it's between 16 and 18% of the gross domestic product of the U.S. economy. So right then and there, they are enormous contributors to what runs the damn country. 
Mm-hmm. And they need to go in the understanding that you are a big player in a very big game. And for that, I applaud you because for you to have the wherewithal to get involved in something as tenuous as being a landlord can be, I applaud you. I think that that shows an enormous amount of uh, strength of character. And I'm in awe of people like that. Um, what you are providing for or for these people is a, is a clean, reasonable place to live. That's huge. You're giving somebody the opportunity to have a roof over their head. I don't think some of the landlords look at it that way, and I think they should. What they're doing is a tremendous service to these people, and they should be a pr- they should be proud of what they're accomplishing for it. The other thing is the less altruistic they are providing for their own families, they're providing for their own their own long term growth. That's huge. Do you understand the mindset that you have to have to go into something like this? Most people don't have the backbone, the wherewithal, the strength of character to take on something as big as this, and this is huge. This is enormous. This is, again, a tremendous part of the economy. I think they should be applauded for what they're doing. I had tapped into um, the Rent Prep for Landlords site not long ago, and I said, listen, you know, and I started a thread, and it took off. And I was kind of, I I thought it was kind of cool. I think there's litigation that should be in place to protect the landlords because of what they endure, what they provide to the economy, what they provide to their local areas. Mm -hmm. It's enormous. Well, you know why there's not. (laughs) And I've always said this, it's a David and Goliath type story. And the land That's owner, nonsense. Goliath. That is absolute nonsense. Well, Come on. This, this is my opinion is that the reason, and trust me, like, I go through every week and I look up recent news stories and I search the keyword landlord and nine out of 10, 19 out of 20 of the stories are negative. And the, um, the preconceived notion of a landlord is these people are greedy. They are uh, money hungry, right. you know, right. all of this. Right. And money hungry. Opinion, sure. And it's a little bit harder to back the landlord with legislation and all that when you have somebody who is most likely in a lower uh, socioeconomical standpoint from that landlord. But um, it's just the reality of it. You know, it's a little bit easier to fight for the smaller guys. So, okay, let, let, let's, yeah, the smaller guys. Let me tell you something. And, and based on what I'm reading on Rent Prep for Landlord, you just lit the fire now. Now I'm starting to get a little twisted. You're going to tell me that these people are, are wealthy? I read a story where the guy, the guy had left his house, took him two and a half hours to get to his rental property to fix the burner, stayed in the house overnight and kept lighting the burner in order to make sure that his tenants had heat. This guy's wealthy? Really? Really? This uh, guy's rolling in $20 bills? Are you kidding me? Well, so let's I, do this then. Let's have all yeah, your landlords sell all your properties, tell everybody you're out. What do you think the government's going to do then? Now all of a sudden we're the bad guy? Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. No problem. You know what? Now you got nothing. Now you got state subsidized housing. You think that's going to be good? That's the alternative? But these guys are Goliath? Really? Let me take a landlord outside and beat him with a stick. He took a a destroyed property in the neighborhood, upgraded it, put a nice family in there to give him a roof over their head, and he's the bad guy. I just want to make sure I understand what you're talking about. Is that what we're we're saying here? I'm saying a perceived notion, yeah. I'm not saying perceived. what is. I know, I know you're not. Perception. And I'm being sarcastic. Perceived well, is the operative word here. And you know what? The guy that you mentioned, his name's Dan. Um, I, I saw that same thread and I was like, man, this guy's awesome. And I, I know Dan a little bit. We That's message. unbelievable. Yeah. I, I have never had the pleasure of meeting that man. I am dying to shake his hand. I don't think he's You've got to be kidding me. Yeah. He's, um, he's downstate, like closer to New York City. Uh, but yeah, he's, um, he's retired. His rental properties are his income. But you can tell he's a landlord that cares a tremendous amount about his tenants and them being in a good situation. And like you're saying, that care and that motivation and understanding that he's having an impact on their lives and the place that they live uh, is pretty incredible when you're seeing that amount of dedication coming through and making sure that wow. uh, they have you know, a warm place to live. I think that guy epitomized commitment, the word mm-hmm. commitment. You've got to be kidding. You drove two and a half, two and a half hours. He and his wife drove two and a half hours. If I I remember the thread, he got there around midnight, Mm -hmm. stayed in the house and relit the burner like five times, then went to the store and found the part necessary for him to climb in there and get it fixed to make sure that his tenants had heat. Now, and I'm being sarcastic and I'm not being confrontational with you, but more with a a situation that I'm seeing on rent prep for landlord. You're going to tell me in good conscience that this is a bad guy. This Mm -hmm. guy, this guy's a wealthy, you know, slumlord. Seriously? You, let me ask you a stupid question. You think a local area government official would have been there at midnight helping this person make sure they have eaten the house? <laughs> yeah. Uh, just a- answer my question. And don't get me on a roll. I've had three cups of coffee this morning. <laughs> I can go. 
No, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Tell, tell me in good conscience, tell me in good conscience, Eric, that these people are greedy landlords and they're all out for themselves and not for the betterment of the people that are renting their properties. Tell me that in good conscience. I dare you. I won't. Okay. Mike, you're, you're like <laughs> miles away from me and I'm still a little intimidated. So, <laughs> Well, it won't take me long to get there. <laughs> you know, I could run if I need to. But this is, so, you know, perceived like that's and the sad thing is that this gentleman that we're talking about wouldn't get wouldn't get the recognition that he so richly deserves for for having the heart that he did. And I'll tell you something else. And I haven't read them yet, but I, I guarantee you that I will. His is not the only story that the rent prep for landlords clientele could tell. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. OK. You know, and I think the attitude that they should have is one of they are providing a tremendous service. They are providing a service to their tenants. They are providing a service to the general area instead of having a, a dilapidated property that brings down values. They're providing a service to the local economy because they have to hire people to get in there and get these properties fixed. So the contractors should thank them. The local area government should thank them because these people are not living on the street and knocking on the assemblyman's or the congressman's door looking for housing. But this guy's a bad guy. Don't get me. Don't get me going. <laughs> I, I feel that, like I, that, I, that's I, what I have. That's what I have as far as your rent prep or landlord clientele. So and I'll defend them to the hilt. For anybody listening at this point, you probably learned that Mike is like kind of like one of those wind up toys, but instead of, having, <laughs> like, instead of having it twisted around like 10 revolutions, you just give it about a, a eighth of a turn and it goes. <laughs> yeah. They just put them on the ground and let them run. Well, Mike, so in that situation that uh, we, we were talking about Dan there, hopefully he doesn't mind us talking on the podcast. Uh, he's a great guy like he he actually uh, messaged me and asked if he could be a moderator in the group i said yeah sure like uh can we donate to a charity for you or whatever you want he goes no i just want to help that's all i want to do and he's got so the guy point. just wants to help yeah okay so, so again proving my point and you just turned it another eighth of a turn he <laughs> just wants to help right okay i just want to make sure that we understand this and you know i'm not being sarcastic with you mm -hmm. and this is more of about a situation and then you use the word perception mm-hmm these people, these people are heroes and I'm not blowing sunshine up your ass. I'm not that nice a guy. Okay. <laughs> but what you are providing again for the local, local economy, for the contractors that do the work on the house. Hey, you know what? They should have a couple of the neighbors that live around their rental properties, knock on the door. Okay. Hey, thank you for making sure that this place is kept up, kept clean. Cause it makes the neighborhood look better, but I'm the Goliath. Really jackass. Is that what you're telling me? Okay. You know what? Why don't I do this? Why don't I have the tenants move out? Let the place go to hell and then tell me what kind of a problem you have with people breaking in or burning it down. Mm -hmm. I think local government should just come to your tenants and, or your landlords and say, hey, guys, thank you. You're welcome because you haven't got the wherewithal to do it. You're a local, you're a government official. You don't work for a living. They, these guys do. Midnight, this guy's like a, um, a burner in somebody in a tenant's house, in a tenant's residence. Yeah. OK. Goliath. Jerk. <laughs> Stupid ass. <laughs> and this is as clean as it gets. <laughs> I love it. So, Mike, for the landlords listening, let's say they're they're not in Dan's position, right? Uh, Dan's uh, got the time right now because he has worked hard. He's built up this rental portfolio, and that's his main thing that he takes care of. But you know that there's days, you know, we see it all the time in the Facebook group, especially where people you can tell are burned out. They're ready to sell the farm because they've just had it with their situation. Yep. And those sure. are the people you're talking sure. about that are just having a bad day or maybe it's a week, a month, whatever it may be. Um, how do you help somebody? I know you said you'd ask questions, but uh, we can't really do that with somebody as far as, you know, a hypothetical, but how would you help somebody find their motivation? Like what, you know, their why, why they're doing it? I think, um, first of all, and you know, it may or may not be possible. I'd love to talk to them. I would love to talk to them. Because I, I believe if I, if I get a nice conversation, a cup of coffee, and by the way, I love caffeine. Caffeine loves me. If I could get them into a conversation, I, I, I believe I could tap into what's already there. They're just kind of missing it. How do you get them into it? Um, like anything else you had said about people writing down their goals, I think if you go back, first of all, one of the reasons why I ride the bike as much as I do is it gives me the opportunity to disconnect. Um, riding by bike also helps me calm down. Do you think I should ride it a little more? Possibly. I think you should um, win over 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, wise guy, if that's a challenge, don't think I can't do it or won't try it. Sometimes, and you're, you're owed this because as a landlord, uh, and I'm not speaking from experience, I do not do that just yet. 
But from, as a landlord, you are basically a 24-7, 365, and there's nobody in your clientele that's going to disagree with me. You need to find a way to disconnect. You are owed that, and you should have that for your own mental well-being and your physical well-being. Um, I think what you should do is find a place, find a way, just completely disconnect, go back over your motivation, go back over your goals. Even better, go back to maybe a journal that you made up, you may have had, let's say five years ago when you first got into this end of the business and look and see what you've accomplished and, and sit back and, and Eric, you've heard this, you're, you know, in, you're somewhat in sales. Mm-hmm. It's called ABC, right? Always be closing. Yeah. What I prefer, I've, I've used it differently to my advantage is ABC, not arrogant or boastful, but confident. Go back and look at what you've accomplished. Go back as if I'm saying it to one of your landlords now that's having a difficult time. Go back and look at what you've accomplished. Go back and look at the difference, whether or not they ever told you the difference that you made in somebody's life. Maybe there's a family that had a child in that rental property. And maybe that kid was, you know, had a, had a warm place to say, you have to understand that what you're accomplishing and giving, providing to these people is critically important for their mental well-being, their physical well-being, and their financial well-being. If you look at it that way and look at what you have already accomplished, and you've accomplished something enormous as a landlord, whether you, whether you choose to believe it or not, it's true. And I will defend it, and I can defend it. Again, economy, physicality, emotional uh, stability of the family that you're providing for. Go back and look at that. Again, not arrogantly or boastfully, but confidently. And say, listen, I've done a great thing. I've provided a great service for these people. That's huge. And that has nothing to do with the wallet. Has nothing to do with the wallet. It has to do with being with being a decent, caring, successful entrepreneur, successful human being. And I think you need to take a step away from the nuts and bolts of the business and really understand what you've provided for a family. It's very, very well said. I appreciate it. But I, and it's true. It is absolutely true. And I'd, I'd like to think, and I say this with love and the, the professional love and respect that I have for, for your clientele, I think a lot of times they don't do it enough. And I think they should. Well, I, I think I, they should celebrate their own success and say, you know what? Not again, arrogantly or boastfully, but confidently, I've provided a great thing for a family. Because what's the other option? They go live in a shelter? Mm-hmm. And we've heard the stories about what happens in those places. You know, you don't need any part of that. You, as a landlord, have made it certain that this family will never endure that terror or that hardship by living in a shelter or that that emotional distress mm-hmm. of living in a shelter. What does that do? Let's say an eight-year-old kid, you know, is, is living in a shelter with his parents. What does that do to his self-esteem? What does that say about him? He feels inferior. If he feels inferior, he acts inferior. If he acts inferior, he lives inferior. And what does that do to him? You're providing an enormous service, whether you choose to believe it or not, for your tenants. And that, for that, I think you should be applauded. Absolutely applauded. One of the, Don't uh, ever lose sight of that. Ever, 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 ever lose sight of that. I love it. <laughs> Mike, one of the uh, things you mentioned, too, that I thought's worth repeating is um, celebrating the successes, because I know this is something that I get uh, become guilty of. Is sometimes um, uh, success feels like a topless mountain that you're trying to climb, and you feel like you're never really getting where you want to be because you're putting this pressure on yourself of like, well, you know, I thought I'd be further along, or I thought we'd be at this, or whatever it may be. And sometimes when you look back, you're like, no, actually, we've we've accomplished quite a bit in the last year, mm-hmm. five years, ten mm-hmm. years. And it's mm-hmm. so easy, depending on your mindset, to kind of bury some of those accomplishments. And maybe it is because of what you're saying, how you, like people are worried about, you know, having a boastful or arrogant attitude and they don't want to uh, do that. But uh, I think it's definitely worth repeating that, you know, celebrate the wins. You have to. And why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you be entitled to that? You have to. That's a fair thing to do. And yet on the other side of the coin, I think it has to, you know, I, I love the fact that, you know, your clientele constantly looking, okay, canny, right? C-A-N-I, constant and never-ending improvement. And they're always looking for another deal. They're looking for this. And I love that mindset. Eric, I love that attitude. The, the sad thing is that attitude is in the minority of most people. Mm-hmm. But for the people like your clientele that, that, is, that is adhering to that way of living, I think, that's, I think that's phenomenal. But I do think it needs to be tempered with, let's take a step back a second, 
Let's assess where we are. Let's assess where we're going. And again, to celebrate those accomplishments because your accomplishments are making life better for other people. And how much better a life could you live when you go in with that kind of an attitude? It's so much about mindset, you know, just, uh, the it's way all mindset. Yeah. It's all mindset. It's all mindset. Well, Mike, yeah, I, for you, uh, I, I, it's a different kind of grind, right? It's a grind being a landlord, but you're a real estate agent. Uh, you've yeah. uh, top 1% earner uh, for your company in Long Island, which I hear a lot yes. of people live on that small, small Island, right? So yeah. for you, uh, what are the things that you keep in the forefront of your mind? I know you said you have naturally, you have a lot of energy and uh, go, but I'm sure there's things that you kind of um, keep in your mindset as you're trying to accomplish your goals and move forward. Elaborate a little for a little more. I'm not sure. I not sure I followed your your line of thinking. Tell me. I'm again. wondering for you if you don't mind sharing. Like, what is it for you that, as far as your motivation, that pulls you forward? That really uh, gives you that energy and like the thing that kind of uh, uh, acts as a magnet for you to pull you forward and uh, really push things forward with um, what you're trying to do out of life. I mean, what is it for you? Um. I think it's just, I, I, I get a tremendous sense of satisfaction out of lighting a fire under somebody and tapping and having them come to the realization, even in a small way that they are, they are, and I use the, um, two analogies, either an iceberg or an acorn. Okay. An iceberg, I think 90% of, of the, the mass of that iceberg is below the surface. I think 90% of what people are capable of accomplishing is below the surface. My goal is to get what is in there, innately in there, and, and you were given it you know, at the, at the moment of conception. You were given greatness at the moment of conception. My, my goal is to get that out and have you look at life and go, wow, this is, this is for me to enjoy, not for me to drudge through. This is for, here for me to make a tremendous difference in the life of people that I come in contact with and for the life of my family. And my and my and my and the community around me of the effect that I can change. If I were to hand you an acorn, what are you six four six five? Six five, yeah. Yeah, you're like a telephone pole. You know, <laughs> if I were, you know, you're just six so six five, x amount of pounds. Okay, if I handed you an acorn, put it in the palm of your hand, what does it weigh? An ounce. Ballpark. Okay. All right. If I told you that that acorn weighs fifty million tons, what would you tell me? Let's say you're full of it. Yeah, you want to you want to square off with me and tell me that sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> you want really? I, I I know where you live. I'd say, It'll take me a couple hours to get to you. Uh, I don't what know about it? that, Mike. Maybe it's a little bit less than that. You know. Oh, okay. You know it weighs fifty million tons. Okay. Tell me how. Well, is it because you've been holding it for too long? I'm not sure. <laughs> no. Within, within an acorn is the potential of 50 million tons of oak. I'm that's true. That's more than one tree. So you plant one oak that's tree. One acorn contains within it the potential of 50 million tons of oak. No kidding. It's true. First of all, I will never tell you anything that I cannot prove. And I've done the research prior to me articulating this. Mm-hmm. In that acorn, okay, as small as it is, and I have one here on my desk, I have it in my hand now as I'm talking to you. If I put it in my pants pocket, I don't even know it's there. It's 50 million tons of oak, as small as it is. Look, the difference between the size of that acorn and let's say the size of a human head, within it a brain. So if that acorn has 50 million tons of potential, what's within you? Mm -hmm. Infinitely more than you are displaying right now. And the whole goal of you and I doing this is to get that potential out. I think as, as, as successful as the rent prep for landlords site is, I still think we're touching the tip of the tip of the tip of the iceberg. I agree and if your, if your dreams don't scare the living crap out of you, then you're not dreaming big enough. Cause the, you know, the, the old, the old saying is, you know, if you shoot for the moon and miss, you still land among the stars. And I love that. But here's the deal. The people that we're talking to, the rent prep for landlords, are already in the mindset of they're looking for something next. They're looking for something bigger. They're looking for that next thing. You understand how great, indomitable the human spirit is? And the rent prep for landlord clientele is full of it. I read the sites all the time. I look at the, the, the things that they're discussing. I look at the help that they're offering to other people. Again, the altruistic part of it. Of, hey, listen, I had, an, I had a situation like this. 
this is how I, I, I handled it. And there's the sharing of that great information. That's tremendous. And, and I need to be a part of that because I just think that is absolutely, you know, altruistic to the nth degree. And people should be a part of that. They should be in, immersing themselves in that because ultimately what you, what you come in contact with repeatedly, what you tell yourself repeatedly is ultimately what you become. That's why I've told you respectfully and politely, watch the words you use mm -hmm. because your subconscious mind is listening and it will take everything you say. It will accept it as gospel truth. It will bring about the very tangible thing in life that it was told was true. So we had you, you, Steve and I were talking yesterday and, and you had said something about when we were talking about putting the mindset, the mind, um, excuse me, the mastermind group together. And you said the possibility and the probability. I would take the possibility out of it. It's the probability. Mm -hmm. There's no way in God's green earth that if you get these people together, we start firing ideas, start sharing ideas, start shooting back comments, back and forth. Once you get four or five people in a group, there is a, a, larger, a larger mindset that comes into play. And all of a sudden, you exponentially expand your mind because now you're firing off ideas on other people. We had talked about um, the book that you're reading. That book is going to mean something differently to you. It's going to mean something differently to Steve. It's going to mean something differently for, to, to Dan, the gentleman we mentioned before, mm -hmm. because all, it is, all it's doing is tapping into the mind that you already have. You're coming up with an idea, and all of a sudden, you're like, hey, wait a minute. So what's written on page 56 might mean something differently to me than it does to you, than it does to Dan, than it does to Steve. You know what's interesting So effectively, you're co-authoring the book yourself because now all of a sudden, that book has taken your mind in a, in a different direction that you had not been in before. And so, it's tapping into something. You're like, wait a minute. I didn't think of that. And then all of a sudden, the mind starts to go and the ideas start to come. And that's the whole thing. Everything starts with the idea. Everything starts with, with the decision to go in the direction that you need to. And that's exactly what Red Prep for Landlords is doing. They're immersing themselves in this mindset. But these are the bad guys. These are these are the Goliaths. These are <laughs> these are the guys that are taking they're taking advantage of the poor downtrodden. Get the hell out of my face! You out of your mind? You're providing a tremendous service to these people, and they need to be reminded of it. And I'm just the guy loud enough and stupid enough to do it. Mike, as you were talking about, uh, you've told me before as far as your uh, what you're saying, the words that are coming out of your mouth, you're the thinking. It becomes a part of you. And I, I've got your book in front of me right now. I, I am, I can, I will. And I open it up to a random page and it says, speak to yourself nicely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it says your mind listens constantly to what you tell it. Mutter things like how senseless you are or how little money you have. And it oh, it makes me crazy. As reality. You yeah, I hear people us. all the time. <laughs> And then I uh, just finishing up here. It says, you won't accept us saying something derogatory about you. So why would you say something derogatory to yourself? I right. That's, that's well said. The, um, that's something that I've struggled with over the years. I think uh, as a kid, I kind of had a uh, self-deprecating uh, sense of humor that I used to kind of have people like me. And it kind of morphed into just being like, oh, I'll make fun of me before you can make fun of me. Almost this weird, like, this is how it's I survived the school bus ride, you know? It's a defense mechanism. Yeah, absolutely. It's a defense mechanism. I and it. I do catch myself saying that stuff where I think because of that, and because of that mindset and that identity that you create for yourself, um, that's why the words like, oh, well, possibly, or maybe, mm. or, mm. you know, it might. Mm. It might. I'm happen. starting to shake. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. Because there's, there's no teeth to it. There's nothing, of, there's nothing that in that statement that's going to serve you. There's no commitment. As a human being. No. Yeah. It's not going to serve you. Well, I might do that. You might do that. I might get hit by a bus. I'd rather not. Yeah. It doesn't serve you. Why would, and if it doesn't serve you, again, not arrogantly or boastfully, but confidently, if it doesn't serve you, why the hell are you doing it? Mm -hmm. Why are you doing that? And it's also called memetics, M-E-M-E-T-I-C-S. It's kind of like what you were, how you were for all, you know, with all due respect to our parents and teachers, how you were programmed. Mm -hmm. What were you, what, what were you trained to expect for yourself? I, you know, I look back now at what the teachers told me in Catholic school. You can go eat dirt because I'm, I am not what you told me I was. Yeah. And I will go to my grave, my grave proving you wrong. So, you know, you know, my mom, um, born and raised in Ireland, not necessarily a, you know, mom's attitude was, you know, don't rock the boat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my attitude is how can we <laughs> sink this thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, let's create something. Let's have fun. You're not getting out of the life alive. So why not get out of life what you want? Yeah. You know, so long as it doesn't violate the laws of man, the laws of God, why not? Why shouldn't you?
Why shouldn't you have 15 properties? Why shouldn't you have 25 properties? Why shouldn't you have, you know, 10, 15, 25 properties that are providing something very, very critically important to the well-being of a family? And that's the way I think you should go into it. Yeah. Not arrogantly or boastfully, but confidently. This is what you're providing to these people. I think you should be applauded. I don't think you should be maligned by local government, by the media, by even by, by the tenants. Always a money-hungry landlord. Really? Uh, you know what? That is perception, and it's a wrong perception, a dead wrong perception. Don't start me. I just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to interrupt, you know. Uh, I love it. I, I feel like this is something that we need to focus on at REM Prep as far as just kind of establishing our goals and motivation uh, for the coming year <clears throat> years. Um, we've been doing great growing the business and it's been great. Uh, but I do feel like that little bit of like complacency kicking in sometimes where we're like, okay, we're doing the things we're supposed to be doing, but like, what's the, what's the big picture here? Um, and Steve how, do we, and I, or how do we do them better? Yeah. How do we do them better? Yeah. And, uh, okay. I, I would love to, um, uh, sit down with Steve, really kind of hammer out some ideas on where we want to take things and like real big picture goals, not just say, Hey, we want to hit like this number or this, you know, this amount, uh, per year, but, uh, what's a, you know, a more community driven goal that we can kind of, uh, that we can go after and achieve. So haven't you tapped that already? Uh, we've, we've beat around the bush with it, but I, I feel like based on the audience that we have, the size, the, the amount of people that you can reach, uh, I believe that there's something more. Um, I don't know if it's, you know, down the line, if it's creating housing, uh, through the business and maybe it's for a certain, you know, um, part of town or I, I've had ideas as far as like homeless veterans, like, could we create a charity for that or at least donate to a charity for that and bring a percentage of the profits of the business towards that and then use that number as that goal, you know? So then it's not just about like, Hey, we're trying to grow the business to X million or whatever. It's about, uh, helping people and making a change, a positive impact in people's lives. So it's about making a positive impact in people's lives. So you're looking to change the world within you in, in your particular area. Mm -hmm. And you're looking to exponentially grow that attitude among your rent prep for landlord clientele that is across the United States. Am I correct? 100%. Okay. So if we, when we adopt that attitude and when we start to implement that as we are today and hopefully as we go in the future and the attitude of your rent prep for landlord clientele is to make life better around for themselves, which they deserve to do, it's a livelihood, and for the people around them. Are you effectively changing the world by doing that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So then you are telling me then that the perception of these people being money hungry, greedy slumlords is completely and dead wrong. Is that right? I would say it's probably a case by case basis. <laughs> no, it's not a case by case basis. It's emphatically wrong. Okay. That attitude, that attitude on the part of the American public is completely dead wrong. It's wrong. It is absolutely wrong. They are not that way. Mm -hmm. And I will defend these people to the hilt. I'm in the business. I've seen what these poor souls have dealt with. I've looked at the rent prep for landlord Facebook page. I've looked at it. You know what? These people are busting their asses day in and day out, 24-7, 365, Eric, providing for another human being. Don't you dare stand there or sit there, whatever you're doing, and tell me that these people are money-hungry, greedy people. That's crack. Mm -hmm. Now, to that end, let's, let's grow this exponentially, not about money, but about affecting a change. When we get the mastermind group together and all of a sudden these ideas start firing and we get a little energy going on and this, this start, starts to steamroll, respectfully, do you have any idea the impact it will have? No, no, I don't at this okay. point. You don't at this point. Okay, let's, let's liken it this way. Henry Ford, at one point in time, all he wanted was a workbench in his parents' kitchen with which to take watches apart and play with them and figure out how they worked. Mm -hmm. Okay, the company, the company was instituted in 1903. Okay, can we effectively expect that what we're doing could grow exponentially and have, it, have even a more profound effect than we're discussing right now? Yes, 100%. The answer is absolutely, emphatically. Mm -hmm. emphatically, you may get five years down the road when we're doing this. And, if I, and I pray to God that I'm, I'm blessed to be involved with you as my bro, as my friend, my brother, my son, really, you're, you're old enough to be one of my kids. Um, that we, we step back, like we had told you, we had asked your clientele to do. 
take a step back and look at what you've accomplished. Maybe five years from now, you and I sit down, you know, maybe on a bike ride cruising through the, uh, the state of New York, and we take a look back and we look and see what we've accomplished. And we celebrate that. And then we move on. And inc- incremental growth. We look at what we've done. We look at the direction where we need to go. We look at what we learned from the, the, maybe the errors that we made, and we grow from there. That exponentially five years from now, we're having a very different conversation. What do your clientele in rent prep for landlords going to be saying five years from now? You know, we got involved with Michael and Eric on these podcasts, and we've grown exponentially. We've picked up 10 extra properties. We've provided for, um, you know, X amount more families. We've contributed to uh, different um, altruistic causes, different charities. Come on, man. You talk about making a difference. How do you not get jazzed about doing something like that? How do you not want to be a part of that? Getting back to Empire State Ride, I had people that would say to me, you know, Mike, you're, you're in your mid-50s. You know, not that you're not physically or at least, you know, mentally psycho capable of doing an Empire State Ride, but why would you do that? I'm like, are you kidding? My question then to them is, why wouldn't you? Why do you want to be put in a box one day and not feel like, you know what, I shined my shoe in life's ass. Life did what I told it to do. It didn't dictate to me and it won't dictate to me. I dictate to life. Life goes according to my plan, not its. And I think by adopting that attitude, life takes a step back and says, you know what? I better get the hell out of this guy's way because he's crazy enough to do this. You're you're the you're the first and probably only guest we'll ever have that said he shined his shoes in life's ass. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) I've never heard that one before. Uh, That's a good one, ain't it? That's a great one. I love it. <laughs> but I think you need to adopt that attitude. And I think you have that attitude. I think your rent prep for landlord clientele has that attitude. And we're going to grow that attitude because your attitude depicts your altitude. Great attitude, great altitude, great accomplishments. Mediocre attitude, guess what you got? Lousy attitude, congratulations, it's yours. Mm-hmm. One, of the, one, of the, one of the entries in the book is you, you think what you are. You know, or, or the question was, who do you think you are? Well, I know who what I think I am. Good, bad, or indifferent. And I am what I am, as Popeye used to say. Um, but I've created my own life just based on my attitude. I'm happy with it. And yet I'm not happy enough that I, ha- I have to make this work even more. Mm-hmm. And, I, and if I can infuse a little of this, this little bit of, you know, off the wall attitude to somebody for their betterment, I'm in, bro. Let's go. All right. Oh, I like I'll to, I'd like to square off with life every day. I get up in the morning and go, guess what? Bad news. I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> this and you're about to have a bad day because I'm about to have a great day. Yeah. Well, Mike, what I want to do, and we've kind of been brainstorming it, and I think whatever it ends up being will be different than what we're saying it is now. And this will evolve and change. But to start off, we're going to start doing these live Facebook interviews. And it'll be a weekly thing where people can kind of tune in. And I'm going to be using you to uh, keep my motivation, keep my compass um, in the right direction. And I know I'm going to have have no choice. Well, yeah, it's great to have that accountability (laughs) partner. You will not scrape. I'm like gum on the shoe. You will not scrape me off, brother. I am not going anywhere. Well, I feel like there's those accountability partners where you could say like, well, the kid got sick and you know, this happened. You're like, oh, I get it. Yeah, no, no, no. Don't worry about it. No problem. Then you'd be like, that's, that's crap. (laughs) You had time. You can do this. You can do this. Like, what are we doing here? You know? So I feel like you'd be a great accountability partner. And what we want to do is to start things off is to see if we can get other people to join the program with us. So, you know, if uh, anybody listening interested, feel free to email me at eric at rentprep.com, E-R-I-C at rentprep.com. And we're just going to do like a weekly check-in. We don't have to make everything public for you. You know, you can go as far with that as you want, but um, it's an opportunity to, uh, Mike will be on the live video with me. If you guys want to check in, you know, see how he's doing, see what's going on. Uh, I think it'll be a really cool experience and I'm interested to see where it grows and what it turns into. I think it's going to scare the daylights out of you. I'm fine with that. I really do. I am too. I yeah. am too. It has no, it has no choice but to do that yeah. because the, atti- the attitude and the motivation behind doing it and the reason we're doing it is the right reason. It's mm-hmm. for the betterment of people. It's not for anybody. It's not for anybody on this phone call right now making money. It has nothing to do with it. And we never mentioned that. It has nothing to do with it has nothing to do with it. I would consider it a great compliment if somebody either I I had the pleasure of meeting or texted me or made an entry on the, um, on the thread, you know, Michael, you know, you're not wrapped too tight. 
<laughs> but but I gained a lot of I gained a lot of motivation. I gained a lot of better insight onto me by listening to you. Great. That's mm-hmm. that's that's my life's goal, man. That's why I'm here. And I, I have my mom. My mom is uh, you know eighty almost eighty nine years of age, and she says Michael came into this world screaming, and I haven't stopped talking, and I won't. My wife says I talk in my sleep. You can't you can't stop me, and you can't shut me up. So. Might as well get on. Might as well get on the bus and go along for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, for anybody listening, again, feel free to reach out, Eric at remprep.com. I can uh, coordinate that, and we'll get it set up. And uh, Mike and I will discuss a uh, weekly uh, show of whether we want to do that. I don't know if uh, Sunday, Monday. I'm thinking earlier in the week, Mike. Uh, but something that kind of creates that accountability early on that I know I'm going to have to answer to. Uh, and I'm kind of just spitballing here. But for me, I think the, um, the, the, it's going to be about creating the larger goal. Like what's the community goal that four or five years out, I like what you're saying about being on a bike ride five years from now and looking back and being like, wow, like we did it. You know, and you, you and I talking about it. Yeah. And, and you're talking about it, say we did it and said, okay, now what's next? Mm-hmm. Cause next is one of my favorite four letter words. Yeah. Okay. What's next? What can we do better? How can we do this more? How can we grow this exponentially? Who else can I get to? Who else can I help? Because that gives you a good feeling, man. I mean, you know, you know, tapping into the ESR experience, you know, we got to the end of, of seven days of 546 miles. And I got to tell you something. I had enough gas in the tank. I could have gone another seven days because we just touched on the, the, the emotional connection that everybody had. We started out literally, I mean, as cliche as it sounds, as complete strangers. Mm-hmm. And seven days later, it was like, you know, I'm, I'm hugging people that seven days ago, I wouldn't have known their brothers and sisters to me, their family to me. And I want that same thing for Rent Prep for Landlord. I want the energy in that Rent Prep for Landlord Facebook page to go, holy crap, these guys are crazy. Yeah, but we're crazy for you. We're crazy for your success. We're crazy for the difference you're making in life. How do you not get jacked up about that? I feel like I need to go ride my bicycle now. I feel like I could just <laughs> put a groove in the road. I'm like, I need to go ride my bike. Why wouldn't you want to be part of that? Why wouldn't you want to be part of something that is 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 just a tremendous effect on society? Not about not about putting a dime in anybody's pocket. Nobody gives a rat's ass. Nobody cares. It's not about money. It's about affecting a change. Let's do this. Oh.